Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Tse. And I'm Raymond Yuan. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Water from 10 more public housing estates to be tested for lead. MTRC chief admits being over-optimistic about construction progress of Express Rail Link. And China's second quarter economy grows by 7%. The government has announced it will be carrying out tests on water at 10 more public housing estates for lead contamination. But it has ruled out a territory-wide check, saying it will try to determine who should be held accountable for the recent water scare. Arthur Urquiela reports. After yesterday's announcement that excess lead was found in the drinking water at Kaiching Estate in Kowloon Bay and at Kwai Lun Estate in Kwai Chung, there have been concerns over how widespread the problem could actually be. Officials said the housing department has been instructed to carry out tests on water samples at all nine public housing estates in the city, built after 2013, as they are similar in age to Kai Ching Estate, as well as another phase of Kwai Lun Estate. However, wider checks around the territory won't be feasible. We are now trying to uh, uh, conduct uh, systematic water sampling of all public housing estates. Uh, which are um, completed uh, from the year 2013 onwards. Now that is roughly uh, uh, similar to the, the completion date of uh, Kai Cheng Estate and also uh, Kwai Lun Estate Phase 2. Now we draw that line 2013 because uh, we think that if we are going to uh, to do some water testing in other estates. Now, we haven't found any evidence of um, contaminated uh, water samples. But if we are going to, to do any testing, then we think that using the similar uh, timeline of 2013 would be uh, appropriate. Because in any case, we don't have uh, resources to do any territorial um, uh, testing. The Housing Authority will also study whether to take action against the contractor responsible for the contamination due to substandard soldering work. The Housing Authority, of course, will pursue the main contractor because uh, we have set requirements, uh, prescriptive conditions in our contracts. So if there's any uh, deviation uh, from those requirements, anything which uh, uh, it is not uh, in compliance with our requirements, of course, uh, we, we would um, uh, take necessary action. Development Secretary Paul Chan said the issue of who should be held accountable would also be discussed by a task force to be headed by the Water Supplies Director. It is to carry out investigation to ascertain the causes of the recent incidences uh, leading to presence of lead in water drawn by households and to make recommendation as to the measures required to prevent a recurrent of similar incidents in the future. Uh, the primary objective of this task force is not to assign responsibilities, but I believe in the process of investigation and making recommendations, uh, the question of responsibilities will be reflected. Authorities have also arranged for 500 residents from Kai Ching Estate and 55 residents from Kwai Lun Estate to undergo blood tests following the water scare, with free shuttle buses to take them to hospitals to get tested. Arthur Akila, ATV News. The MTRC's head Lincoln Learn conceded today that the railway company may have been overly optimistic about the Guangzhou Express Rail Link's completion date. Leung also apologized for not making public the project's delay earlier, but refused to admit the MTR had failed in its duty. The express rail link to Guangzhou has been under the spotlight after it had failed to meet its completion date twice and saw construction costs soar to an extra $20 billion. Speaking during a LegCo Select Committee meeting, MTR Corporation's Chief Executive Officer Lin Kon Leung was grilled by lawmakers about the delay and the cost which has ballooned to more than $85 billion. I would like to apologize that MTR did not, until April of last year, provide the government, the Legislative Council and the public with an updated assessment of the completion date of the Express Rail Link project. As a result, 
our announcement of the delay in April 2014 understandably caused public concern. Leung also admitted that they were over-optimistic that the project would be completed as scheduled. Although delays to particular contracts were well known and communicated, we were too optimistic on the overall ability to catch up with the original timetable. But Leung's explanation failed to convince the lawmakers. Engineering sector lawmaker Lo Wai Kwok slammed the MTRC over the delays and cost overrun and asked what penalties the railway corporation should face. Under the entrustment agreement, as members are aware, both the schedule, the 2015, the August 2015 schedule, as well as the estimated costs. These are estimates, and I'll stress the word estimates. New People's Party legislator Michael Tien also questioned if there was a lack of site inspection before the project began, and if the MTRC had failed its duty. I do not agree with that at all, Chairman. Okay. The express rail link was originally estimated to be completed next month, but is now three years behind schedule. A Consumer Council survey has found huge price differences among storage services across the city. The watchdog also found skin sensitizers that can cause severe allergies in all air, hair dyes they tested. Karen Yuan reports. The Consumer Council looked at 25 brands of hair dyes. One of the brands was found to contain a sensitizer that exceeded both mainland China and the European Union limits, while 23 samples contained two or more types of such chemicals. The presence of multiple sensitizers can cause severe allergic reactions. But it doesn't mean that those products which comply to the health standards won't cause allergies. Even though if you look at individual uh, sensitizer, even uh, its concentration is within limit, uh, it doesn't mean that people will not get allergic, especially who, for some people, um, you know, who have a, a history of, um, you know, exhibiting allergic reactions. These people, uh, they can, uh, you know, develop symptoms even with a low concentration of this uh, sensitizer. Symptoms of allergies include rash, flaking and itching, or even swollen eyelids and blisters in serious cases. The council also found that in one sample, carcinogenic nodella can be formed if the hair dye mixture is left idling for too long. But its chief executive, Gilly Wong, said consumers should not worry too much as long as they have followed the instructions. The best advice to consumers is um, just follow the instruction, you know, very carefully. Um, don't, you know, apply your own judgment on how to use it because this is um, something, you know, that people use um, many times, you know, uh, in a year. And if you want to be safe, um, you have to have the allergy test, you know, in advance and also to follow the instruction. That's the safest way, you know, for you to use this product. The Consumer Council is also advising consumers to choose mini warehouse and valid storage services carefully according to their own needs. Its survey found that the price differences of mini warehouses can vary substantially, and door-to-door -door delivery charges for valid storage could well surpass its monthly fee. It warned that the insurance of the storage companies would not cover damage and loss of properties. It also urged consumers to be aware of the location and hygiene of the warehouse services offered by valid storage providers. Consumers are advised to look into the storage sites and the terms and conditions before signing a contract and to avoid storing high-value items. Karin Yang, ATV News. Eleven students have scored top marks in this year's Diploma of Secondary Education exams. And book lovers have flocked to the annual book fair in Wan Chai, which is seeing a record number of exhibitors this year. Vicky Wen has more. It's that time of the year again when book lovers will queue for hours outside the Convention and Exhibition Centre in Wan Chai and rush in when doors open. It was no different this morning when the fair opened at 10. This man said he had arrived and queued outside the hall at 1 a.m. in a bid to secure the limited products he wants. The event also tends to attract tourists looking for more varieties of books. This man from Shenzhen said the fair offers books that can't be found on the mainland. 
The annual book fair this year is seeing a record 580 exhibitors from 33 countries, including newcomers from Hungary, Australia, Canada and India. Some exhibitors said they are optimistic about sales this year. The fair attracted more than a million visitors last year, and the organizer is hoping to see a new record in the coming days. The seven-day fair closes next Tuesday. Eleven students have scored top marks in this year's Diploma of Secondary Education exams, with level 5 double star in at least seven subjects printed in their report cards. They include six boys and five girls from eight schools across the city. Thrilled with her results, one of the top scorers from St. Mary's Kenoshan College in Tim Sa Choi says she aims to enroll at the University of Hong Kong's medical program. Another star pupil from Diocesan Girls School in Jordan says she also hopes to study in a medical program. The top scorers are not the only one who feel happy today, and this 20-year-old girl is also satisfied with her results, although they might not get her a place in any of the universities. She was diagnosed with a muscle contractions disorder when she was seven and needs to take dozens of pills to endure the long hours of the exams. She says she will continue her study in other diploma courses. Just as last year, only about 40 percent of some 74,000 students will be able to enter local universities this year, meaning two students will be competing for one undergraduate pace. Two private van drivers have been arrested after charging undercover police officers' fares for two trips. The police officers posed at passengers and booked the vehicles, which do not have highly high car permits and third-party insurance, through Internet for trips from Cyberport and the airport to Happy Valley. The two drivers, aged 37 and 44, were caught after they received $380 and $600 from the officers for the hire. The police said they have so far received six complaints about unlicensed private vehicles taking fares this year. BQN ATV News. China's economy has grown by 7 percent in the second quarter. The figure is steady with the previous quarter and slightly better than analysts' forecasts. Karen Yang reports. The figure was announced this morning by the National Bureau of Statistics. Spokesman Shen Lai Yun said gross domestic product for the first half of this year was 29,686 billion yuan, an increase year on year of 7 percent. Shen said the domestic and external environments remained fairly complex in the first half of the year. And maintaining a stable and healthy development of the stock markets or capital markets are vital to promoting a stable domestic economy. It has been a difficult year for the mainland economy. Slowing growth in trade investment and domestic demand have been compounded by a cooling property sector, deflationary pressure and, more recently, a stock market crash. Meanwhile, a market analyst says he is surprised by the latest GDP growth rate. The reason I'm surprised it hit 7 percent is that the GDP targets going forward are no longer hard targets. Like last year, it didn't hit the 7.5 percent target, and most people are expecting it coming in below 7 this year. So I think that's the right thing to do is these targets are no longer mandated. It's okay to come below them, right? So you may see it miss still in the second half of the year. The mainland government has forecast economic growth of around 7 percent for 2015, which would be the weakest rate in 25 years. The news that the economy expanded 7 percent did nothing for mainland shares. The Shanghai Composite Index today closed down 3 percent. Karen Yang, ATV News. The International Monetary Fund has attacked the bailout offer to Greece by Eurozone leaders, saying it is highly unsustainable. And Japan's lower house has approved two security bills that could allow troops to fight abroad for the first time since World War II. Japan's ruling coalition lawmakers approved the bills after a raucous debate, with opposition MPs shouting and brandishing signs that read, Abe politics is unforgivable, and against ramming bills through. Despite opposition from ordinary voters, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says a border security stance is vital to meet new challenges, such as those from China. Opponents say the revisions violate the pacifist constitution and could entangle Japan in U.S.-led conflicts around the globe. The IMF has hit out at the deal Greece has been offered by its creditors, saying it is highly unsustainable. It warned in a secret study 
that Athens will need a far bigger debt relief than European governments have been willing to contemplate due to the devastation of its economy and banks in the last two weeks. The study said European countries would have to give Greece a 30-year grace period on servicing all its debt, including new loans and a dramatic maturity extension. On Monday, Athens and its 18 euro partners agreed in principle to open negotiations on a third bailout program of up to 86 billion euros in return for tougher austerity measures and structural reforms. Earlier, Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras said in an interview with state television that although he did not believe in the deal, there was no alternative but to accept it to avoid economic chaos. But he ruled out stepping down or ceding power to a national unity government with opposition parties after being forced to abandon his election promises. The Greek parliament must approve pieces of legislation later today.